Greetings, friends. So glad you chose to join us again here at Christ Church, where Pastor James Davis is going to deliver a powerful word from God. So I pray now that this word impact and change your life. Prepare your hearts now to be blessed by the word of God. Man, scripture this morning, amen, I'm going to be before you, amen, very shortly, and be out of your way very shortly, hallelujah, but I got a word that I believe that I, I'm going to share with you this morning, we've been ministering week after week about aftermath stuff, you know looking after stuff and then living through that. Amen. And uh, my iPad won't won't do its don't want to do its thing. Ah, okay, that's better. Talk to it a little bit. Hallelujah. The the Bible this morning, we want to talk to you from the book of the gospel according to John chapter number 15. Hallelujah. I, I, I want to talk to you about no greater love. Amen. So meditated on God and how good God has, God has been, how God, good God is, what God does, y'all. I'm blown away by the by the fact that God has shown us a I, I yet don't get it I just don't get it you, you know we sang the songs I, I don't know why uh, Andrew, Andre Crouch sang the song I believe it was I don't know why he loves me I don't know why he cares I don't understand why he gave his life for me but I'm so glad he did Amen. I, I really am. I'm really glad for that, that God did. This morning, I want to talk to you about no greater love. And uh, I've been trying to uh, not necessarily get my mind around it because I know that's impossible. But I've been trying to get little pieces about understanding the love of God. Praise God. Amen. And, and his relationship to us. Uh, that, that God does some stuff that's, I, I, it, it just does not come together so I just accept what God does so let's go to the word of God I'm reading from the New Living Translation amen I want to read first amen so that if I don't get a chance to amen to expose it all you are guided you, you have it and the Holy Spirit will give you uh, clarity in it, amen, maybe tonight while you're sleeping, praise God, but I want to talk about no greater love, because I'm trying to, un I'm trying to comprehend that in my own life so that I can pass it along to somebody else, oh, praise God, amen, beginning at verse one, it says, I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener, he cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit and they prune the branches that do bear fruit so that they will produce even more. Praise God. Amen. And so in this first and second verse, we establish two things. Number one is that I'm not over me. All right. Amen. Amen. And as God gives the analogy of the grapevine and the gardener, amen, using himself as the, as the gardener and God as being, uh, uh, he being the grapevine and the father being the, uh, the gardener who takes care of the grapevine, amen. And the purpose of the grapevine is to produce grapes. And what he says is that he cuts off every branch a mind that does not produce fruit. Now, that caught my attention. Because I hadn't really, I seen it, but I'd never seen it. Do y'all get it? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes you can see stuff, but you, you really don't see it. And I finally seen that, 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 that there's some branches that God just whacks them off. 
they, they, they're gone. Hallelujah. Amen. And then the ones that bears fruit, he prunes them. Now, now there's a difference between being pruned than being wiped off. Hello, y'all. Uh, amen. Praise God. Amen. So there's some branches, y'all, they ain't getting a chance to be pruned. They getting wiped off. Hallelujah. The ones that bear fruit, he says, I'm going to prune. In other words, I'm going to take time with them. I'm, I'm going to take a little stuff off. But a pruning is the process, y'all. It's not death to the, the, the branch. Oh, praise God. When you prune the branch, amen, what you're doing is taking off some stuff that's not necessary for the, it to bear fruit. Come on, y'all. There's some things in our lives it's not necessary for us to bear fruit. And so the Lord comes out and he cuts those little stuff off. Oh, praise God. You, you need to understand that. Verse 3 says, you, you, you have already been pruned and purified of the message I've given you. So what's the, what, what do I need to prune myself? You need the word. Mm. If, 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 if the word comes in you, the word is what God uses to prune us. Are, are y'all with me? Amen. You need the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is what prunes us. He prunes us because we're bearing fruit. If you ain't bearing fruit, you don't need to be pruned. I say it again. If, if you're not bearing fruit, you don't need to be pruned. So I took the liberty to find out what is fruit. What, what is fruit? Amen. Fruit. Dictionary. The ripened ovary are ovaries of a seed bearing plant. So that caught my attention. So when we talk of fruit, ladies, come on, ladies. Amen. Because I don't think men have ovaries. I, I hate to get on y'all. I'm not being sexist this morning. Oh, praise God. Amen. We all have o ovaries. Amen. So we don't have the ability, y'all, to bring seed. To bring fruit. To bring fruit. We, we don't have the ability. Oh, praise God. Amen. And so he said that when, when he's talking about fruit then, Amen. It, it, it's together, it's over together with accessory parts, amen, containing the seeds and occurring in a variety, amen, of forms, which let me know they're not all the same. So your fruit might not be the same as somebody else's fruit. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. And I know in this culture, we, we look at fruit differently than if we were a, bot, a botanist, a, a botanist looks at fruit differently than you and I because we consider fruit is first of all one of the qualifications for fruit is that it need to be sweet yeah 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 we look at something being sweet amen if it ain't sweet we don't consider the fruit fruit amen but how many of y'all understand that a tomato is the fruit according to the botanists hallelujah oh praise God amen and so, so, so he started to deal with fruit. And I find something, something very interesting I'm going to share with you. But let me finish reading so I don't get off the track. He said, Re remain in me and I'll remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. I mean, yeah, we're getting a whole lot of information here. Amen. Oh, praise God. He said, yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. He established who you are and who I am, who he is. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. And then I like this. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered together in a pile to be burned. Mm. But if you remain in me and my words, 
remain in you, you may ask for anything you want. And it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my father. He said, I have loved you even as the father has loved me. Remain in my love. And when you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my father's commandment and remain in his love. I've told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. And this is my commandment. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I've loved you. There's no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friend. You're my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I've told you everything the father told me. Praise God. You didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. And this is my command. Love each other. No greater love. I, 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 I want to understand some of the, uh, and, and some of the relationships that, that we are dealing with today and on a national level, on a um, state level, on a local level. And to understand that, I had to go back to understand the Lord. Then how do we relate to you? And how do you relate for us? And why the Father took such great measures amen, in sending you? What, what was involved in your love amen, for him to do all of that? Oh, praise God. Amen. And then the Lord reminded me to go back and look at how I started creation. So if y'all look back with me to Genesis chapter number one, I found some interesting stuff in Genesis chapter number one because what God does, y'all, you, you, you know, the, Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. Right. Amen. Amen. Nothing new under the sun. Praise God. Amen. And I found some interesting stuff in Genesis chapter number one about creation because I, I told you that God is always replicating himself. Amen. And so you can find that throughout the word of God. Amen. That God will, all, you will always find God in, 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 in every microism. You'll, you'll find God. And as you look for him, you'll find him. And he says, if you seek me with your whole heart, then you'll be found of me. Praise God. Genesis chapter number one. Amen. If you look with me at, uh, well, let me just read the two verses, verses 11 and 12. And then God said, let the land sprout with veg vegetation, every sort of seed-bearing plant and trees that grow seed-bearing fruit. These seeds will pro then uh, produce the kinds of plant and trees forms which they came, from which they came. And that is what happened. The land produced vegetation, all sorts of seed-bearing plants, and trees with seed-bearing fruit. Their seeds produced plants and trees of the same kind, and God saw that it was good, and an evening passed, and morning came, marking the third day. So when we deal with this thing about this vine, this fruit, these seeds, and all of that. What God showed me here, it, that in the beginning, I replicated myself in verses one, from Genesis 1, amen, in, in day 1, 2, 3. If you look at it, in day number 1, what God did was, in order for seed to happen, y'all, there, there has to be some separation. Day number 1, what God did, he separated the, the, the darkness from the light. Come on, y'all. See, everything can grow in the same environment. There got to be a separation down the street, y'all. Amen. On the 
right side of the road, Brother uh, Ty is nursing our garden down there. Amen. And uh, I, I looked at it the other day, and yeah, the, it looked good. I can see stuff from the street now. This moving on up, it has broken the ground. Amen. And I see stuff coming up along with the stuff that we transplanted. So the garden is looking good. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. But there's some preparation had to take place. Hallelujah. He, he just couldn't go down there amen, and put seeds because in one area we had grass. Uh, come, come on, y'all. Amen. And then just to put the seeds down, amen, it, it, it wasn't conducive for it to grow because the soil was not prepared. Hallelujah. In the first place, I said there had to be a separation. Amen. To understand the great love of God. Amen. You got to understand the separation between darkness and light. And so the first thing God did, God separated darkness from light. Don't fool yourself. Amen. The things that get stuff in the light. Amen. It's different from the stuff that gets stuff in the dark. Separation. The second thing God did which is, I like him, replicates him, was on the second day, amen, God separated the waters in the heaven from the waters on the earth. Oh, praise God. Amen. So what God showed me there was that not only darkness got to be separated from light, but there also has to be a separation, y'all, of the earthly from the heavenly, from the, the divine to the natural. Amen. There got to be a separation, y'all. You need to understand, amen, as the Bible says, uh, amen, as the natural man saw a day of, the, of that ram, but as the spirit man saw a day of that particular ram. And so you need to understand, amen, everything don't necessarily go together unless you got an understanding. There, there are two different spheres of living. There's darkness and there's light. There's heavenly and there's earthly. The third thing what God showed me, amen, is once he had that, now creation and fruit can come forth. And may I tell you on this morning, this is the love of God. If you want to bear fruit, first of all, there has to be a separation of darkness from light. Secondly, you've got to understand there's a difference, y'all, between heavenly stuff and earthly stuff. Oh, praise God. Amen. I want to bless you today. Amen. And maybe you would understand why you are not bearing fruit. The third thing what God did, God gave amen, the ability of reproduction. Come on, y'all. And everything that God created, y'all, he put within it the ability to reproduce itself. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why I went to John because he, what John did, he said, I'm the, I'm, I'm the vine and you, you, you are the branches. And you, I know we are men, El Oliver, but in the spirit realm, we have ovaries. Because God calls all of us to reproduce. The fruit is being able to reproduce. What? After our own kind. So may I say to you today, if you're not reproducing after your own kind, you need to go back and look and see whether or not have you been through the process. Has there been a separation from darkness to light? Have there been a separation from heavenly to earthly? And only then are you qualified, amen, to reproduce. There's a situation in the word of God that women suffered, it's called, it's called barren. Barrenness is the condition wherein that you cannot reproduce. Although the natural stuff come together, you just don't have the ability, amen, to get the job done. Something is missing in your natural life. And it took a miracle of God to overcome barrenness. If you're barren on today, you also need a miracle to God to overcome that situation. Need a miracle of God. 
Hallelujah. I'm wondering, Lord, there's a love that needs to be, that, that, that needs to be given to everybody else. And, and, and Lord, if you gave me that love, I, I need to give it away. I, I need to create other vessels that will also love like I love. Because what God asks us to do is to love like he loves. Uh, Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. But you've got to have the capacity, y'all, amen, to be able to bear fruit of having that kind of seed. Hallelujah. That can be fertilized by the word of God. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Why is there so much hatred and discontent? Not only in the world, but also among those who call on the same name. What, 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 what's going on here? What's happening here? Hallelujah. Amen. It's because y'all, hallelujah, either there's a failure of separation, a failure of understanding, hallelujah, the process that God has already established. I want to help you today, y'all. May I tell you, it's where you separate, amen, relationship from religion. There are people this morning that's got religion, amen, but everybody don't have relationship. For it's only through the womb of a relationship this heavenly, y'all, that you can establish a relationship earthly. <laughs> I, look at, I look at all of the things that we're trying to accomplish in our communities and so forth, and many of it is one-sided. And we don't understand, amen, and what God has shown me, y'all, that we've got the ability to accept because we've got a heavenly side and we've got an earthly side. And we ought to be more prone to help on the earthly side when we are rightly related on the heavenly side. When I say God is good, Come on, y'all. There's knowledge that comes only from him. Amen. You can't get it from the schools. It's called wisdom. Yes. Amen. Wisdom comes from God. Hallelujah. He said, if you need it, you can act to me. I, 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 I won't even, I, I'm not going to give you a, M, a, a, a BA, a AAS, a either a MD, a, 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 I ain't going PhD. I'm not, he said, I'll give it to you, amen, without measure. Uh, Joe, what can, what, what's the level of your wisdom? I don't know because there's no levels to it. Y'all go to school to get lovers of knowledge. Oh, God. But in God, there's no lovers of it. It's unlimited. Amen. And God will cause us to flow in you according to the need at that time. Oh, God, I'm preaching good to myself. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and that's what God wants. So, so when you understand and all of this stuff, y'all, is mired in this thing called love. Hallelujah. And that's why he gave the command, love ye one another. Yes. Hallelujah. Because when y'all get a hold to love, <laughs> hallelujah, amen, you will see fruit that's unusual. Right. Hallelujah. But you got to get a hold of love. Not this, uh, not this mushy kind of garbage that y'all call love. Amen. Much, much of this stuff, y'all, is the word is lust. It's not love. What separates the two is the, in love, you got O-V, in lust, you got U-S. You got us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And, and we need to understand this love. So he said, no greater love. I'm trying to get to this love that, that he's had so I can love because y'all y'all got to admit with the, there are some people that you really don't care for. And I'm trying to ask the Lord, Lord, help me to get over me. Hallelujah. Help me to get over my issues. Help me to get over myself. Hallelujah. Because if I'm going to replicate you in the earth realm, then I've got to love you in the heavenly realm. 
Am I making sense to anybody? Hallelujah. Amen. So God said that you need to abide in me. You got to stay in me. Not only do you need to stay in me, but I need to stay in you. See, there are people that tell you they got God, but God ain't got them. Hello? Amen. Amen. They got God, but God ain't got them. The relationship has to be mutually exclusive. Amen. Not only do you need God, but God needs you. Amen. You got to be in him, but he's got to be in you. And many people today, they got God, but God ain't got them. God needs you. Hallelujah. But he won't be in you. Hallelujah. Hey, unless y'all, you got the kind of love that he's got. And that love, y'all, it's an it's a unrestrained love. It does not love because somebody loves you by. Come on, y'all. It's the nature and character of it. Amen. By itself. God wants us to get to the point, y'all, amen, that we do things because that when we talk about this morning that God is good, when you correctly understand that it's not because of what he did sister Derek he is good because of who he is he's God alone hallelujah if he never did another thing for me amen I still need to declare God is good cause it's not contingent on outward actions it's, amen. it's just the state of being of where he's at. Hallelujah. And God wants you to get to a state of being. See, we're so concerned, y'all, amen, with, with getting in with this and getting in with that instead of just being there. Hallelujah. When you learn how to be there, then you'll learn how to worship there. Hallelujah. And then it doesn't matter what others around you do. No greater love. No greater love. What happens when nobody understands you? It don't matter. What happens when nobody agrees with you? It don't matter. Uh, you, you're not hearing me today. See, Jesus Christ just show us, he came to show us the way. Uh, how can I access this kind of love? Because all that he did for everybody in his, in his toughest hour, nobody stood with him. Had you ever been there? Hallelujah. Nobody stood with him. Everyone forsook him. Come on, y'all. Just don't, just don't holler at the people that don't like you. There were other people that said they loved him. Oh, come on, y'all. I'm going to get to that greater love. See, if you're going to make it in this life, you've got to learn how to be loved like Jesus. And that is you've got to love people when they won't love you back. No greater love. That, 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 that's kind of love because everybody ain't going to love you back. You can give your last for people. You can give your life for people. Hallelujah. But you got to do it. Amen. Uh, anchored in the heavenly kind of love. Don't look for it in the earth realm. Hallelujah. You ain't going to get it. It won't happen. Hallelujah. What God is saying to us, amen, for our universe, for our world to change, amen, the fruit that he wants is himself. The fruit that he wants, he don't need you to lead a, lead a service. He, he, he don't need you, amen, to, to do this. He just needs you to be. He needs you to be, be like him. Amen. Be like him in your attitude. Be like him in your relationship. See, there are people that can live this inside of here on this morning. But please don't run into them tomorrow. You, you would think that you ran into the Tasmanian devil. But 
but what Jesus said. In other words, and so that I tell you, amen, that, 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 what it tells you that, that they say that they're in him, but he ain't in them. When, when y'all reading the folks like that, amen, just write yourself a minute, no, not, Jesus ain't in them. And keep on walking. Hallelujah. Jesus ain't in them. I knew I was in service yesterday and they was lifting up a hold of hands and they were singing and I thought that something had got a hold of them the way that they were moving in church. But now it's Monday. And we're in a different environment. Oh, hallelujah to God. Amen. And they act like that I'm a stranger. Oh, praise God. Understand. That they in, they in Jesus, but Jesus ain't in them. What the word of God is saying, the greater love is that not only, amen, Jesus, Jesus need to be in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. So a lot of people, they're in Jesus. they in Jesus. You call it, you call it Christ Church this morning. You, you, you call it Metropolitan. You call it whatever you want to call. They're in what we should, well, yeah, I was in, yeah, I was there. Yeah, we had a time. We were in it yesterday. But, 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 but he ain't in you. Amen. And what God looks to get in you. Hallelujah. Amen. Because, see, the world will not come to church. The world won't come to church. I listened to the Catholic preacher talk this morning. Amen. And he was talking about how that, uh, how that we're different because Christ is in us and we're different from the world because Christ ain't in the world. I said, wow. A Catholic preacher talking like this. In other words, he had got the information. There got to be a separation from the darkness and the light. Come on, y'all. Understand that you're, you're critical and deceived if you, you think that dark and light can coexist together. And in our culture today, one of the things that church is trying to get across today is darkness and light is coexisted together. And one of the teachings is, I don't care what you believe because we all going to the same place. And so we make no separation. We make no distinction, and God himself makes a distinction. Come on, y'all. God himself makes a distinction. You say, well, I just got some issues. Well, anybody that got issues with God like the devil did, amen, God kicked them out. Come on, y'all. The Lord wouldn't, if the Lord would live with the devil in heaven, amen, uh, if the Lord wouldn't live with the devil in heaven, why do you think the Lord won't live in you with the devil? So the devil got to go. If Christ comes in, the devil got to go out. But the day what we tell people is, yeah, you just got a little, you just got a little devil problem, but that's okay. Yeah, you got God too, so so you okay. You ain't bad as sister so and so over here. So you you all right? Mm -mm. No, 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 man. You won't get that love. You, 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 the, the love isn't there, and so that's why the Lord said, "You didn't call me, but I called you." Hallelujah! I I I chose you to be in. I understood your proclivity to sin. But I chose you and I cleaned you up. I washed you. Amen. I took the marrow out of your eyes. Amen. I put eye salve on you. I healed you. Amen. See, when God calls you, God just does not leave you the way that you were. But when God calls you, he cleans you up. Amen. He'll call you like you are. Hello, if I'm a gigolo, he going to call me as a gigolo. Don't tell me it's not my gigolo before I come to Christ. Impossible, can't do it. That's why he has to, he has to call me. God got to get me. Hallelujah. Amen. As a gigolo. If you're a liar, you can't stop lying. God called you as a liar. 
And then God takes away the lie. Most time people, amen, religious of people will tell you, well, I can't come, amen, because I don't have y'all church clothes. I need to stop doing some stuff. No, you don't. You don't need to stop doing nothing. Keep on cussing. Come on, y'all. Come like y'all with your cussing self. Hallelujah. Because, see, you know, it's not grace if God don't take it away. See, if you take it away, then you can go and pick it up again. Come on, y'all. That's why God takes it away from you. Hallelujah. See, I tell people all the time, if you could have been doing better, you have already done it. You already done it. Don't tell me no. You would have already done it. Praise God. Amen. If you could heal yourself, you wouldn't go to a doctor. You already go. You'll go ahead and heal yourself. Save your money. Amen. You go to it because you can't do it. You can't handle your problem. So we say, tell people, come to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. People say, well, I want to come to church. You can come if you want to, but I ain't asking you to come to church. You need to come to Jesus. Amen. Be, hallelujah. You can go and come to this church, that church, that church. Church don't save you. Only Jesus can save you. People have misunderstood that. And they said, well, they teach something wrong over here wrong. And the people around here, they're hypocrites. And the people over there, yeah, I seen them. He's a deacon, but he's got a mystery on the side. Well, you're always going to find mess in churches. Don't look for anyone where you ain't going to find no mess. They don't exist. All of them got some kind of mess. Hallelujah. But what God would do, amen, Jeremiah chapter 15, I think, God would take you and God is, understand, God knows how to take the preciousness out of the vileness. And so God can keep you in the midst of the mess. The relationship is number one with him. A lot of times people can't make it one and one another because they have no relationship with him. Praise God. When you've got a relationship with God, then you can fellowship with the liar. You can dance with the backbiter. How oh, y'all like saying nothing. Oh, praise God. Because you understand what the word of God said, let the tear and the wheat grow together. God said, I'll do the separating. It's not my job to tell a liar he can't come and to tell a backbiter. No, everybody can come. Ain't my place his place. He's going to do the separation because when your relationship is right, heavenly, amen, it matters not what people do earthly. That's why right, y'all got to learn how to forget about what somebody else does. People say, well, I would worship, but yo, know, they, they ain't worshiping today. I don't care whether you worship or not. I've got a relationship. You understand the channel is open, amen, and I can get through. Oh, come on, y'all. I can get through. This morning, they had a, a, a little old, uh, march on our run on our street, on our road, not our street, on our road. And they had sent our paper, but they said, just be careful, they're going to have. But they did not say that the road was closed. They said, just watch out for the runners. And so we were, they started at a particular time, and this year we're a little, little late leaving, so... I'm, I'm leaving. I watched the runners until I could get in, driving my car. I know they're on the road. So they said, what were you going? I said, I'm going right down that way. So they get down there. They got the whole road blocked off. Two policemen. And uh, I'm going to call them a, I'm going to call them a fireman. He wasn't a fireman, but somebody. And they had the road blocked off behind. They had something in the road. I just kept driving. Kept my windows up, didn't roll my window down. It was enough room for me to move, go through them, go around them, get on the grass, and get back on the road. They looked at me, I looked at them, and kept going. <laughs> you, you understand? You know, I'm not violating the law because there was no law that said that y'all was closing the road. You just said, watch out for the road. You should never close the road completely. I was watching the runners, but it was time to go to church. 
They, they want to say something. No, I need to get to church. So you going to preach the sermon today? Amen. No, you, you don't need to block. I, I live here. Y'all just invaded my area. You don't live here. Y'all just wanted to run here. So they were saying, yo, what, run that road I want to talk to? I didn't answer her. Because I know I wasn't going to roll my window down to talk to the policeman, nobody. I know there's enough room, and the one guy looking at me, no, there's enough room, my car passed, you better move your behind out of the way. I'm going to church. <laughs> y'all, see, y'all got to understand some something, amen? And that is, you, you know, y'all, we're too t- intimidated by things that's happening in the earth. They took the time, y'all, they planned it this morning to do their run. Ain't got nothing with you to run. But I live here. And, and, and there's no emergency where that you can, amen, when you can block me in my own house. Hmm. I know God got me here for a reason, y'all. And he teaching me every day. And I wasn't getting nasty. No, no, no. Because, see, I got the love of Jesus. And if they wanted to mess with me some more, then I, was, I had my Bible right there. I mean, I could start preaching there. Give y'all the phone call. I'll be later. <laughs> you know, before, they didn't do this kind of stuff. They had some kind of respect for the day. But people have lost respect, not only for the day, but the God of the day. That's why I said God is good. Amen. So we've lost respect for God. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and see, if I'm, going to, uh, if I'm going to replicate him, oh, praise God, I need his love amen, to deal with obstinate attitudes and conditions. Jesus dealt with that in his day. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And you as a believer, you got to deal with it in this day. You just can't accept everything this culture is putting out. It's okay. No, it's not all okay. I'm a believer. I've been bought with the price. Hallelujah. The Lord sent me to influence my culture. How you do it? Because I've got this love. Amen. His love helps me. Amen. And gives me the wisdom of how to deal. Amen. Jesus in his culture. Amen. He had influence. They didn't like him, but he was there. They tried to catch him up on stuff, but he was there. They tried to get him even on his taxes. You ain't paying the proper amount of taxes. Praise God. Jesus had to deal with it. He had to deal with him with the, with the family issues. He had to deal with them with the church issue. They got him because he wanted to do it, because he did miracles, amen, on this day. They got him because he did miracles in the church. Because the church had de- degenerated, y'all, until it was just a place, not where God showed up. So they tested him by sending that man in the church with the withered hand. See whether or not would he heal him. Oh, yeah, you come here today. Yeah, you're going to get healed. Hallelujah. Amen. Please understand. Amen. I, I, I really do. Yeah, I'm not here to try to, to placate you. Amen. And your position. But God called us, amen, to give a clear word to the society in which we live in. Oh, praise God. You're not at a Yankee baseball game. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Some of y'all say, well, I ain't going back there. Well, I, that's your choice. Oh, praise God. But when you get ready, when you get over yourself and come back, you'll find out that I'm giving you truth and you'll find that the truth is the only thing that will set you free. Amen. Truth is the only thing that will liberate your life to allow you to function in this society. Y'all, whether y'all know it or not, this society is in a whole lot of hell. It really is. Hellish attitude, hellish situation. Oh, praise God. And for you to survive it, you need him. Amen. Amen. You need Christ. You know, it's like people now, they, amen, with our system is so set up until we look at 
what we get from the government, we live in the sense of entitlement. What I'm entitled to do. Do, do y'all realize y'all ain't entitled to nothing? Amen. You're not entitled to it. And so when entitlement goes, then what's going to happen to you? That's why you got to, you, you, you got to learn to trust him. See, no greater love. Why? Because you, you learn to trust him. Praise God. Amen. I'm, I'm going to make it. Why are you going to make it? Do you know they cut off this? Yeah. Do you know they're stopping that? Yeah. Do you know they ain't doing that? Yeah. What's going to happen? I'm going to trust in the Lord. Amen. Because God will make a way. I want to get y'all to understand to the point, y'all. The Bible says some trust is in horses and some trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of our God. Please don't get hung up on the government and believe in the government is going to bring you out. You got misplaced trust. Amen. Government is not going to bring you out. Amen. And as a believer, you should understand right now, that's why we trust in God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why Jesus said, you, in trusting him, you need to stay with me. And I need to stay with you. Have y'all ever went somewhere with your kids? Amen. And you told the kids, uh, you, you need to stay with, don't you run off. Right? Y'all stay with me. Hallelujah. Because they got the tendency because the allurements of things around them to get sidetracked. So are the people of God. But you need to stay with me. You need to stay with Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Because Jesus understands y'all some of the enticements of our culture. But they will mess your life up. You need him. I need him. Praise God. Amen. I need him every day. Amen. If you, you don't understand that, amen, you, you need to call up, amen, call us David said, Paul, I need to say I can talk to the pastor. What's he talking about? I'm talking about your life. I'm not talking about, you know, the church per se. I'm talking your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Because somebody sung an old song, uh, not an old song, but they sung a song. There's a storm out on the ocean. And it's coming this way. And if your soul is not anchored in Jesus, you will soon drift away. Y'all, we're putting a lot of confidence in everything else. Amen. We're building our hope in a whole lot of stuff. But you're not building in Jesus. Jesus, and that's why Jesus said that, you know, you need to stay in me. Amen. You need to abide in me. I need to abide in you. That, that's why it's all about staying in it, staying in there, staying in there. But there's a nice and fine coming along. No, he says stay in me. Amen. Some of us are jumping ship for a nice and fine. Jesus says stay in me. Praise God. Because it's only in me that's got life. There's much counterfeit going on. The counterfeit, y'all, is not just in the world. The counterfeit is also it's in the spiritual realm. There's much counterfeit. Amen. I just seen a little piece this morning, and they said a, a week ago with, with how much of our information is being, the China, amen, they blame them for, amen, for stealing it in bulk information, amen, about the people and, and, and stuff in this country. There's someone stealing information on you. How you going to make it? It's only in Jesus that you are encoded. Oh, praise God. It's only in him. So they're stealing. I don't know no better way to do it. If y'all are able to read the papers every day and you're able to comprehend what's going on in the natural realm, multiply that a thousand times and you can understand the spirit realm because the same stuff is happening same kind of stuff that's happening they just had what the other overnight they had a couple of, of uh, 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 murders break out of Dan and Moore that they are looking for right they're, they're murders they don't know how they did it they say but they had to have 
tools, electrical tools. You're in prison. You're not supposed to have electrical tools. Come on, y'all. If they can break out of a, 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 a maximum security prison, amen, I've been to Danamore. I don't want to go back. I, I was a visitor. I was a guest, but I ain't like that. I, uh, mm, it, it didn't like it. Didn't, didn't like where it was located. Didn't like going to our big old door in front of it. Didn't like getting locked in once you be, change the big door, they lock in. And, 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 and they got, somebody got to open the next door and then you're in the next area where you're still locked in and then you got the guys up there with the guns on you. Oh no. God set me free. Hallelujah. He, he set me free. Hallelujah. Unless the Lord give me an unction, I ain't going. <laughs> y'all go ahead and get the prison y'all want to. Amen. Please don't call for me to visit you. I, amen. It needs a strong unction from the Lord to send me back in that place. But they just, just work. But, but y'all, what I'm telling you is the stuff that's going on in the world, show the stuff that's happening in the spirit realm. That's why you need to be in Christ Jesus. That's why he needs to be in you. There are things that you cannot uh, articulate except he do it. Amen. There are things that, y'all, that's going on. I said to y'all, that's a congregation, amen. There's a reason why people here, you're getting all these crazy sickness and illness and, and stuff like that. This demonic from the spirit realm. And the only thing that will come back this kind of stuff is the spirit of the living God. Amen. It's the spirit of God. And you haven't seen anything yet. I think Brother Vince was telling them, they got this thing coming on now. What is it? The devil or uh, this, what is it? A show or uh, yeah, what is it? A show? Uh, uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When have the devil been a good guy? And see, that's what we're falling for. We're falling for things that should be uh, supposed to be good. It's, it's messed up. Amen. Praise God. So, amen, no greater love. God loves us enough to keep us out of stuff. Hallelujah. But you need to stay in him. So whatever about your life is messed up so he ain't there, y'all, you need to, may I tell you, you need to call home. You need to get reconnected. Praise God. Get reconnected to him so that you've got those resources available to you. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. There, there are things, and I'm just giving you the warning, y'all. Things ain't got bad yet. Things will get worse. I hate to be a, the voice of doom, and then I don't hate to be it, but it's what we're living in. Things will not get better. Things will get worse. Oh, praise God. I just need you to prepare yourself. Amen. Amen. Prepare yourself for, for what's coming. Hallelujah. Amen. Prepare yourself for what's coming. I'll close with this. In the Bible, it talks about 10 virgins. So that you don't think that I'm warped. All of them were virgins. There were 10 virgins. And I talked to the people of God. They were temper. They were all virgins. Amen. The Bible classifies five wise and five foolish. And I'm talking to you because I want you to be called foolish. The five wise took oil with their lamp. The foolish took none. So when the bridegroom came, everybody was sleeping. The wise was able to trim their lamps and go and meet the bridegroom. The foolish could not because they didn't have enough oil. What am I saying? I'm not saying that it's just the people in the world. 
I preach to the people of God here. Five wise, five foolish. Don't be foolish. Now, I'm not claiming you of, of living and doing sin, but I'm, I'm on you for your wisdom. God gives us wisdom. He said, if anybody like wisdom, let them ask me and I will give it. So whatever you're doing in life, you need to ask God. You should not be making decisions on your own. Whatever they are. See, because then you're a contradiction to yourself. You say you love God, but then you make your decisions and, and ask God to bless them. You, you, you're wrong. Amen, you're wrong. Seen it over and over again. Praise God. We do something and then we want God to bless it. No, you ask God first. Is this your will for me? Is this what you want me to do? We sing the songs they're right, but we don't implement it in our lives. Songs say, I surrender all. All to thee I owe. Sin have left the crimson saying, but you watch me whiter than snow. Then we ask God, God, draw me near. Draw me near to you. And then we go off. I, I just want to show you the foolish things we do. And then we go off and we, we make decisions. We make decisions based on our own intellect without seeking him and asking God, God, what would you have me to do? Amen. But we make, we make decisions. We make decisions outside of the conference of God. I'm warning y'all people, amen, whatever you decisions you're making, amen, you really should talk to God first. Amen. amen. I, I ask God about it. It might, be, it might seem to be a good opportunity. Praise God. But everything that seems good is not good. Because only God can see your tomorrow. So you need to ask God. Yo, I, and, I, and we're making decisions. I'm seeing it. I'm not... Not calling out anyone, but I'm, I, I constantly see it where people is constantly making decisions and I don't believe it's God. And it's only by his mercy that he will help them to make it. So if we want the love of Christ, if we want that love, that uh, greater love than this, that man will give his life. I, I, I give you this word today yeah, you know, because it, this, this, this particular word, y'all, uh, you know, it can come back and slap me. But it's what God is saying. I, you know, I can't withhold what God is saying Amen. to us as the people of God. Amen. We, we, need to, we need to be wise in all that we do. It's more than about waving a hand. Amen. It's more than about a song that we sing. It's more than about giving our money. Our, it's more than that. I praise God. We are so lopsided, amen, in our view of God and not understand that God, amen, deals with us totality in every aspect of our life. I get you all here for a couple hours on Sunday. You got most of your life is with yourself. And I pray to God that God, you're giving them a word that will affect them during their week. So when they need to make a decision, that that word will rise up in them, that they will make right choices for their lives. So that they would experience the abundance and the blessings of God. Hallelujah. Amen. God wants you to be blessed and God will go before you. But there's some groundwork, y'all, that you've got to do in your life. So three things you need to do. Number one, you need to make that separation between light and dark. Number two, you need to make that separation between heavenly and earthly. And number three, you need to understand whether or not are, am I the fruit? Do I have the abilities to reproduce? That's what God wants. God's called us here. He ain't called everybody. He can't call some of us. Amen. But he wants us to reproduce after our kind. 
And what I want to reproduce, y'all, is that love that I don't even get it myself. I don't understand it myself, but I'm striving to get that. Hallelujah, amen? Because some people gives me issues. Can I be honest? Amen. Y'all, listen, the Bible says, don't y'all sit up in here and lie. The Bible said that a liar would not even tarry in his sight. So don't lie about anything. If you're not there, you're not there. If you need to make it, you, you need to make it. If you got to do changes, do the changes. Hallelujah. Yo, this is not the time where you need to put on a false mask, which is a hypocrite, and claim to be something that you're not. Who was the Socrates say? Above all things, be true to thyself. Say I'm a church goer, but I don't have a relationship. <laughs> be true to yourself. Because when you admit who you are, then you position yourself to get help. But when you keep not telling the truth about yourself, then you can never get help. Praise God. You know, somebody said to me on the past week about somebody was having a problem. I said, the body of Christ so exists where the body of Christ should be able to help others in the body of Christ that, that have problems. I said, but they got to be honest. But if they're not honest to admit that they're in mess, nobody can help them. Listen, y'all, if I ran off the road and if I don't call nobody, y'all know I ran off the road. I've got to tell somebody. But that one sin that's killing us is called pride. Our pride won't let it Somebody else know that I, listen, I messed up. I know I'm supposed to have it all together, but I don't. I know it seems that way, but I ain't got it. And I need some help. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Get honest with you. Praise God. Stop trying to, stop trying to uh, please everybody. That you are okay when you're not. Amen. Begin with God. Tell God, God, I got shortcomings. I got some issues. And I need your help. Don't know everything. Praise God. Don't know how to do it. Hallelujah. God, I need you. And you're on the road then to discover that love that I'm talking about. That love that will help you to deal with folks in spite of themselves. Help you go on. That's why I'm asking God, God help me. Even when they don't take the advice, help me. To love anyhow. To go on anyhow. Praise God. To help anyhow. Amen? Amen. Praise God. That's it, y'all. I'm sure this word was a blessing to you today, and I'd like to take this time to welcome you to Christ Church of Albany, and we'd like to invite you to our Sunday morning worship service at 381 Sheridan Avenue. So come and celebrate with us every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. And remember, the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures through all generations.